Oh, we don't actually get to see the conversation, even though they were talking. <sighs> cold, 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 cold. Why don't we just keep what we had, and uh, where did we end off- Where did we end off earlier? I remember seeing that this was playing. Did we already go through everything? I don't know. Well, I'm kind of okay with what we have right now. I don't know which ones we've played or not! Yeah, okay. It sure is chilly out there. It's kind of refreshing. The hobo out there seems like a nice guy. Billy Vine? Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very respectful. Apparently, he got into some legal trouble, and that's why he's like that. Really? He could also just be a very nice crackhead, though. So, are you gonna tell me? What? Why did you stop having one-night stands and all that? I started working here. I don't know. After I started working here, I felt like I didn't need to do that anymore. Maybe I was just lonely? Aw, how cute! I also got fed up with everyone complaining about me smoking on the bed. You're gonna burn the bed with that. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need a hug, just let me know. You don't need one night stands for that. Hmm. Although, Alma keeps saying that, Oh, you know me so well, better than all the guys I've dated. I don't get any sense that she's interested in dating me at all. Even though... I'm clearly interested in women, but is she? Maybe she's not. <sighs> you left me thinking, though. What's your... thing? Your fetish? You strike me as the kind of have an overpowered fetish of sorts. <laughs> you want to feel totally swayed by someone, have consensual yet forceful sex with your partner. <laughs> Did I hit bullseye? You have quite the imagination, girl. Oh my god, okay. Sip of water. Hey, Alma. If you're not dating anybody right now, could recommend somebody for you. Honey, some service here. I'm here, don't scream. Oh uh ho? -huh. Were you two hanging at the back of the bar? What kind of stuff were you doing? Just talking. Is that what they call it these days? What do you want? Something soft, something sweet. No alcohol, please. Wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from a vending machine? But I like you! Do you dislike my presence so much? <sighs> sweet and non-alcoholic, you say? Alright. Sweet and non-alcoholic. Sweet and non-alcoholic. I guess we gotta go here. Sugar Rush, optional Carmotrine. I'll make it big, but no alcohol. Sweet, light and fruity, as girly as it gets. Which is, I think, what you had last time, too. Here, like you asked. See? You don't get this kind of treatment from vending machines. Unless you're Lawrence. But he has this weird idea that good service is the same as selling lukewarm cans of cola. Lawrence? A friend of mine. He's a vending machine. Oh, okay. Vending machines... Do they have AI inside them? Oh. Oh, but how impolite of me. Hmm? I'm lovely and my name's Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Alma. The pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? Yep. Why? Nothing. I guess I've heard about you before. Of course you would've. Really? What kind of stuff? Tell me, tell me! Mmm, mostly about your... Mm, pluckiness. Ah, oh, and here I was thinking it was because I'm a sex worker. <laughs> so much for trying to be subtle. Pluckiness? What does that mean, pluckiness? Hey, I take pride in my job. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a good thing, but sometimes people do jobs even though they're not taking pride in them because they gotta eat. Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself, thank you very much. Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. You just said don't use the word hacker! Really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the kind that sees a computer logged into some account and says that's hacking, right? No, of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. Do you just start typing really fast while waiting for something to happen? No. I can explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. We won't know until you try, right? Last time I said that, I had to jam this plastic replica of a halogen light bulb up a grown man's ass. It's too early for this. It was a success! <clears throat> okay then. Let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. Alright! First, I do some research on the target. OS, servers, how the information is stored and all that. There's been a couple of occasions where I had to go in blind, but they're the exception rather than the rule. Well, usually, you're being hired by the company you're trying to figure out, right? So you would know all this information already, or... Hmm, are you trying to go somewhere else? First, I secure things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other, more vulnerable computers I find on the way. Uh-huh. After that, I start testing the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits, as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. I, I see. Then when I'm finally in, I go in and retrieve user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. How do you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me. But the usual way is using a buffer overflow. Uh, Dorothy, are you okay? <laughs> Buff... What happens next? What happens next? I... create a backdoor in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I can't... I can't handle it anymore! Alma! Hack me! Hack me like you've never hacked anything before! Huh? <laughs> no! She's turned on! No! No! No one's gonna pay you here! Get out of the bar! This isn't a love motel! Shoo! Make my buffer overflow! Create a backdoor in me! Escalate your user privileges! Find flaws in my security! <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. No shit, what happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? But they make it sound like they're having sex instead? Suggestive scenes, yeah. Well, that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really? I guess humans don't really get it because our minds don't upload to networks or anything. But trust me, if you recorded yourself giving a really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, you'd make millions. Horny Lilum are an unexploited market. I see. Oh, looks like my ride is here. Your ride? Yep, my brother-in-law came to look for me. The one that's separated from your sister? Is it alright to ask that from him? It's okay. I've known him since preschool. It just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey Dorothy, you need a ride? Can you drop me by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yay! I'll take your offer then. 
Bye, honey. Later, Jill. Hey, they both left. Take care. Oh, the street seems noisy. Well, people haven't been discouraged from visiting the streets, even though the bank is on lockdown right now. Oh, a client. Hello, welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? Such a small yet comfortable place. Truly, an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of the suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can just sit to kill their insides. Oh, should we hire you to do our marketing copy? By the way, why is there a question mark on your forehead? <laughs> okay. Truly, a persona non grata. That's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and philosophical. Are you being ironic right now? Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. What will you have then? 17. <laughs> Excuse me? I said 17. 7 plus teen. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? Just to be sure, 17 is about the drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be. <laughs> 17? The hell does that mean? Does the question mark on his forehead mean that he's a- He's a Riddler! He's a freaking Riddler, oh my god. Well, 17... 17 ingredients in the drink? Or... Page 17. Which would be... Piano Man, again. This drink is pretty popular, huh? Do we have anything that's 17 ingredients? I wouldn't know off the top of my head, and... I feel like probably if we read the stuff, the description, would that help? We can try going from the top again. Hmm... I don't remember seeing anything that was 17. Oh, what if it's the price? $170? Uh, Seventeen... Hmm... Seventeen... Right now it's twenty... What is it again? Twenty-seventy-something? Twenty-sixty-nine, was it? This one's kinda unbearable. Well, how many ingredients did the one on page 17 need? The Piano Man. Two Adelheid. 2 plus 3, 5, and then 10, 15, 18. That's 18 ingredients on page 17. Well, if we really want 17 ingredients, all we gotta do is find one that uses optional Carmel Trend, right? Because we can put as many as we want. But between the page number or the number of ingredients, which one should I choose? And actually, looking at the price here, this one's also 170. Two Carmel Trine, six Bronson Extract, six, seven, eleven, and then thirteen. What about the other one? Three, three, optional Carmel Trine. Um. Maybe what we can do is try doing this. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. So that would be... What? That would be 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. But then... I don't know. Like, I have to pick one, right? 17. It's just a 17... Drink 17 doesn't really... Like, it's such an arbitrary menu here, right? And it doesn't really correspond to what he thinks, probably, because... Why would he think of page 17 on my thing? So that's why I'm gonna lean towards thinking it's 17 ingredients instead. And... I'm hoping this works. 
Fluffy dream, fluff dream. Fluffy dream. A couple of these will make your tongue feel velvety. More of them and you'll be sleeping soundly. <laughs> Kinda want this guy to go away anyway. Okay, explain. Oh, great. The total of ingredients here add up to 17. Hey, they know what I was thinking. Beautiful. And what brings you here, Mr... I'm Armandio. Virgilio Armandio. See? I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. <laughs> okay, I think I see what they're going for here. <laughs> right. And I came here looking for an otherworldly experience. I was passing by and I saw this place is called Valhalla. I want to see the souls of resting warriors, the wounded spirits of noble souls. The golden hall full of never-ending banquets, the lively Valkyries looking over them. Mm, we have some arcade machines on the corner. No, no, no. You're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic. I'm giving a mystical air to a mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people. I wanted to see waitresses and food. I wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're certainly adding to the decadence. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised, given how things have been going on in the streets, though. Humans are a nasty bunch, that much is true. Making a ruckus, coming at each other, but that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh yeah? Then give me an example, not zoologist bartender. <laughs> like every other animal? <laughs> Like I said, I don't know exact details, I just know that isn't right. If memory serves right, once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something. Even hamsters kill their own. <laughs> takes over a pride? You can't take over pride. Pride isn't a tangible thing. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, we had too many nice people recently, so they had to throw this guy in here. You need to stop making things up, not zoologist bartender. I'm surprised this guy doesn't have a fedora. But going back on topic, do you know what the number 17 means? The atomic number of chlorine? No, and Chloe is a name, not a number, you know. <laughs> the group where halogens are in the periodic table? Hey, did Jill study science, chemistry, in school? Stop making up words like halogens, periodic, and table. Okay then, I give up. Seventeen is us. Eh? Every human has 17 pairs of chromosomes. That's not true. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the website for checking your genetic history is called 23andMe. What is? Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 17. Well, they're both primal numbers, so it's the same idea. Primal. Do you want anything else? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. Okay. He wants a plum floating perfume in a son of a bitch. We know exactly what this is! A fedora! Oh, that's what this was named! That's right. This is perfect for you. I wish I could give you more karma trying to make you go away. At least it's expensive, though. Give me $100 tip. Here. Ha! Huh, you didn't. Wait, you did. Enjoy! I will. I'll drink this, um, perfume. That's not even a drink. You don't really have to. 
No, 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 you have to. It's your pride at stake, right? Your intangible thing that's at stake here. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender. Have you ever thought about death? How? What if we're already dead? Both of us. Well, it's a pretty good thing that we're in Valhalla then. What? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we were not, in fact, in heaven or hell all along? I can't. What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? <laughs> is that how old the dev is? 20-something? Okay, we're kind of making fun of this guy right now, but what he's saying here, I feel like it does have some legitimacy to it, because how... How can we prove that our existence is real? What about that theory about how, oh, maybe we're in a simulation right now and somebody's actually controlling all of our actions and we don't really have self-determinism? It is a good question, because how can you prove that? <sighs> I could punch it and make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that, actually. This reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. No, that's a pretty good answer. Such a close-minded way of seeing things. You need to... get away from the factual facts, as opposed to the non-factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. The Habanera has started! It means the Twilight of the Gods in German, by the way. Really? Somehow I kind of doubt it. I'm actually gonna look it up because I don't trust this guy. His name! Did he make it up or was he born with his name? I kind of wonder about that too. Habanara sounds like a freaking dish. Habanara is a Cuban dance. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order. Um, what? Hey, what's going on outside? All the shaking. A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh my god. Oh, hell. Let me take a look out the window. Be careful. I see lots of flashes in the distance. Most likely gunshots. Jill, come here a sec. What? About five gigabytes of reports proving that several White Knight squads have been used to cover. Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown anarchist group. Oh, They're doing it. Alex Rabbit is doing it. We're receiving reports of several units going rogue. And using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Oh my god, what? Why though? Because uh, the evidence is out? Several counterterrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the vice president. We're still waiting for a declaration from Zaivatsu Corp's CEO on the subject, but until then... Things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. I'd recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? Well, you have your boss here! She's not gonna leave you here, I'm pretty sure. They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. And I'll be here protecting you, as an added bonus. Is that a dreamy sigh? <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? <gasps> no, I guess it's fine. Good. <sighs> Let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have Zankan To on hand, just in case. Is that the name of a sword? To means sword. Like a blade. The metal bat with nails? Or not. There's nothing I can't bash. Heh. <laughs> Say, Gil, four. Oh, four! Four will be okay for one night, right? 
Four is a bit of a strange name. I wonder if it's a reference to anything. Hope everything's better by tomorrow. Aww. Sleep tight, I'll protect you. Oh, <laughs> starting to see why we love our boss so much. Yeah, we're making less and less money every day, aren't we? No, today's pretty good. $2,000. Not so bad. Hmm. Are we really not gonna go back home then? That means I gotta go into work on Sunday again. That kinda sucks. <laughs> Here we go. Should be getting OT bonus for staying at work or something. Are we gonna keep the bar open or closed? Oh. Oh, yep, we're here. Rise and shine. <sighs> Morning. It's 11 a.m. though. That's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. How so? Zaibatsu Corp's president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. Oh my god, neighboring city forces. All the white knights defected? They couldn't suppress even just a few groups? There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. You make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Petrified? Is it because they wear armor? And then the armor... Maybe they can be controlled by the companies, so... Or the government. So they can stop the armor? Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out, and it's not really safe yet. But it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. Oh, I wonder if Sei is okay. Is there a possibility that Sei is one of the people that defected? I don't think she did because judging by what she was talking to us about before, about her boss thinking she's simple-minded and all... Should we be worried about Gil? Oh, I never even thought about this, but what if Gil's involved? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that whatever it is he's doing, he's safe. What if he's like a super hacker? What if he's Alice Rabbit? Dare I say, even safer wherever he is than here. I sure hope so. Are we gonna work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Cool! Oh, alright. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. <gasps> oh. Oh, is this like a reference to Metal Gear Solid? I feel like I've seen this kind of interface before. And here we are. Home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey, boss. Wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit. Mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. Yeah, and I'll show you my kotatsu. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. Ho 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 To more beer? I do have a bunch of beer here. Bought on discount. I was gonna say, to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. Come on in then. Excuse me. Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me though. Smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing the Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. 
Oh, right, boss. You're not very good with a cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? The Kotatsu! Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from some time ago, and it was too big for me. Why buy it then? It was dirt cheap. Actually though, buying a size that's bigger than what you are, I feel like it's something that mm, frugal people slash not as financially well-off people do a lot. Especially if you're younger, because you're hoping to grow into the clothes. Right. Wait, where did you get this one? Uh, dunno. Some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing. It's just like one I had many years ago. Oh my god, Jill, did you thieve it off of her? What happened to it? Um, by the way, we're at our house right now, right? Does boss not see that poster of her on the wall? And has she never looked at my phone? Jill is so composed! Even though I feel like she really, really loves her boss, she's not showing it at all when she's talking to her. Maybe it's part of the whole professional bartender thing. What happened to it? Too much use, it just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want, I never use it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17! <sighs> Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. <laughs> This game has a lot of anime references, so I feel like this might be a obscure reference to Japanese voice actors too. There is a bunch of actresses that claim they're eternally 17. The most well-known of which is Inoue Kikuko. She played Amelie in the Japanese version of Death Stranding. She's, you know, 17, but she has a daughter in the same voice actor industry who is above 17 years old. So you can guess how long she's been doing this shtick for. <laughs> All right. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. Hello? Oh, maybe 4 doesn't like my boss. Say, Jill, there is a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my general direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just 4. He's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home we had a bear. Oh! Okay. Oh, I s What? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. Wait, didn't we hear some crazy story about Boss beating a bunch of bears before? Right. Hmm? This picture here isn't something you see every day. Whoa, I look so young in it. What? Me taking such a sappy pic? And the expression is so different too, like, I look so happy here, and here I'm like... <laughs> not like that anymore. I've been corrupted by society. No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, um... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabrielle, her sister. Huh. Is this pic recent or... Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. You look exactly the same. Well, much cuter expression, though. But you're still keeping that picture, so it makes me think. Do you... Hmm. I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent, because you usually don't see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. I guess everything is digital these days. Including decorations for our household. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. 
let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I still have feelings for her. I just... went away, haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to picture you doing such a thing, and you look so happy in the pic. Why have her pick out like this then? I just couldn't get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume with theirs. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. Wow, you recited that word for word! I don't know, I felt nostalgic, then miserable. I'll just put this away. <laughs> I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there is this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. Well, whatever happened, happened so long ago that it would be nice if you see her again and both of you have put it behind you. I don't know if you'll get to date again, but it would be nice if you guys are on good terms. That'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm? What's that on the table? <gasps> Looks like an Emva... It's nothing, nothing. Now, please, give that to me. Lope. All right. I saw nothing, don't worry. What was that? Oh, was that my shining finger thing? Was that what I got in the beginning of the game? A anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Ooh, beer so far, cans left 12, remaining beer 100%. Oh, we got really lucky! We bought a bunch of beer for this! Shine Spark, out November 15, Kira Miki. That was a month ago. Damn. Uh, drink. Oh, I can only drink five times. Really? But the cans left didn't change. Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, Beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. It's cheaper than water. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one is more of a pilsner. In English, please. <laughs> this one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. No, no, it doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <sighs> oh, is it five sips per can? Yeah, that might be it. If we drink more, maybe we'll say more crazy things, huh? Is this one made with that, um... What was the name of that base liquid you used at the bar again? Nutriogenic Dichometrical Lytogenol, or NDL. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the Maiden Kiss polluted water supplies. <gasps> In the future, water has been replaced? Oh my god. Well, no, right? They're saying they wanted to do this. The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And this is the one made with it? Let's see. Yup, here it is. Near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see. And I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. <sighs> Guilty as charged. 
Oh, I don't know when the best timing to get drunk is. I don't want to down everything right in the beginning, right? Because I want to have real conversation and then maybe later on, if we get talking a lot more, then if you get drunk, that's when the deeper conversations happen. I still have a bottle of rum somewhere around. Do you want some of it? Will you have some too? Not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Well, some people might not because we have a work relationship. So it's more of a business thing than friends. Dunno, what with being my boss and all, I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Oh! My best friends! <laughs> oh, drink a whole thing for that. I'm so happy. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm boss in name only anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me that you kept the poster of me in the room. Ah. Uh, and even more that you hung it in plain sight. Did she give it to me? When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know? Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face. Yeah, but I'm like basically worshipping you. Are you saying I don't really love my boss that much? I just hung it there because she gave it to me? No, right? Because I, I drew hearts all over you and stuff. I'm still wondering why you did it though. Okay, massively drink. Don't want to answer. <laughs> Aside from filling an empty spot in the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny too. I guess it's like if someone gave you... I don't know. A dildo-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyways, so it's kind of pointless. What? No steamy nights of fashion? Not since a year ago, I think. And I'd rather not talk about what happened then. Oh, now you gotta talk about it. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess. Uh, not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Oh. Jill doesn't have any augments, right? As far as I can tell? Glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo-shaped trophy. Did you just call me dildo face? That's what friends are for. <laughs> this is nice. You know, meeting your co-workers and bosses outside of a work environment. Hey, Jill, where did you get that black four ball? <laughs> ah, black four ball, like black fur ball. Clever. Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's actually a stray. I found him in the alleys near the building, not long after I moved here, I think. Oh, I see. It was quite the sight, though. He was cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There was a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rainwater in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. They ran and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out, the little shit started following me. So you brought it home. At first, I wanted to see if I could find him a new home, but... Having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up staying. It was destiny, girl. When he came, he was so cute though. Not like the fat mess that's sleeping on the table. 
Well, he's fat because of you, because you haven't been feeding him properly. Or maybe he's not exercising properly. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. <laughs> Am I hallucinating this? Dana, do you see this? Oh. Okay. Apparently everyone does. <laughs> oh ho. Ah! <laughs> Shit. I actually did that in front of someone else. Oh ho 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 ho. Need lots of drinks. Uh, anyway. Don't anyway me. Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. Ah, <sighs> I wonder if Gil's alright. That was a fast topic switch. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. Mm, you can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third? He absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. <laughs> eh, food preferences? Maybe he just really doesn't like it. How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He... what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right, levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just... showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have money on him. I... couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He... huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I judge him from what he did as an employee. Well, that's very, very kind of you, boss. You're very non-judgmental. A lot of people would see Gil being like that and be like, Whoa, get the hell out of my store. Because I'm assuming when he came in here, he was not looking that great. Maybe more like a hobo. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time. Sometimes, literally. You're literally covering his ass? Do I want to know? <laughs> what surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole robber thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know? How so? Well, with the regulars, you've earned, of course. Like the blonde city hacker. I can't remember her name. I told you, it's Alma. Alma? I was gonna say Armitage. Well, she's hot, I'll give her that much. She's also a nice person in general, but damn, she's hot. Take a drink for that. Oh, am I getting drunk? Oh, I didn't even notice! My face! My face! Okay, uh... uh should I be holding back? Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? It's weird to see you say so openly that someone's hot. What? Even you can see that she has a hot body, boss. <laughs> You'll find no objections here. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to a room and... Why didn't you tell her this? I feel like she might be up for it. 
Jill, you sure you aren't drunk? I am. I mean, I'm sure I'm not. I, I mean... <clears throat> but those are thoughts I leave to myself. I don't think I could handle her in a relationship. She has weird standards. That, and she's as straight as straight gets. She's still a lovely person, though. That she became a regular is a blessing. Any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, oh, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes to it with such childish excitement. It's, it's kind of weird when you put it side by side like that. I've kind of noticed that too. But then again, Lilum can be weird. You think? Lilum operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. You know, if I drink too much beer, is there a possibility that the conversation will get cut short and will pass out? Maybe I should slow down a little bit. <laughs> it's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they are... different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm, I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy has a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Let them get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Does that include sex work? Interesting. The name Lilum is a bit weird, though. It is? What does it mean anyway? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't convey the image of automatons. Well, when you talk to them, they don't really convey the image of being automatons either, so I think the name matches what we see. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them retarded, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilum? As far as I know, because they all came from a bigger AI called Lilith. Oh, I suddenly figured out what this reminded me of. Evangelion. You know, there's like Lilith and Lilums in that. And Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Oh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. <laughs> Jill is short for Julianne? Julianne doesn't even shorten into Jill though. It would be like, Jewel? <laughs> oh, that's why Gil keeps saying, hey, you should be called Jules. See? Like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister is a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything. From the dolls to the costume to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. Oh, a true warrior of justice. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies. And yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. 
I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid's show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there. And that is a problem. Back then, I was obsessed with jewels. I sang the songs, dressed like her, I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. That's beside the point. It was nice when I was in elementary school, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against jewels. I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. Oh, that's really sad because it sounds like something that's instinctive now. It's not really like a um, conscious choice. It just brings back too many bad memories. Extra sad because that's something she loves. And yet, it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened, and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was, and went on to become who I am today. Oh, okay, so you've been like this for about a year then. Nice. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. Say, boss, how do you like the men? 2D. <laughs> 2D? Yes. I don't mind anything as long as that thing is cute or 2D. How about you? Oh, so Dana, Dana is into like anime and stuff? Um... Back in high school, I liked them funny. In college, I liked them successful. After a while, I just wanted them stable. And now... And now? I... I don't know. Feel like you're still really hung up on your ex, so maybe you don't want to... Um... If you go through a traumatizing thing like that, like a bad breakup, I feel like there might be a possibility that you don't want to get close to anybody anymore. I stopped caring about them being funny. My high school boyfriend started conflating cheering me up with mocking me when I'm down. I also stopped caring about them being successful. I realized half the time they had no qualms about cheating with me or on me. And I stopped caring about them being stable. Ooh, this one might be a bit... I realized they were the kind of person I was trying not to become. Not become stable? There was this guy who became so obsessed with holding a stable job that he hated. He started being physically ill. Not only that, the last time I managed to get some, I ended up throwing the guy out. He took incredible offense with how I smoked on the bed after sex. The bed could catch fire, you know? Oh, not you too. I kind of envy Alma for that. At least when she dumps a guy, it's for less petty reasons. <sighs> I wonder if Jill would be willing to talk about this kind of stuff normally, especially with her boss. Maybe it's because she is super freaking drunk right now, and we only have 1.8 cans left. Are you okay? <sighs> I'm I'm fine. It's just... It all boils down to the fact that I can't get my mind off Lenore lately. She was... She was all of what I just said. She made me laugh. 
she had a good position and was stable. She was also smart and caring and why can't I get my mind off the whole thing? Oh, that's a drink moment. It's... it's maddening. Is my boss drunk at all? She's not turning red. Maybe I should go and apologize? Maybe I should. Maybe that'll make me rest easier at night and get my mind off things for a while. I don't even care about going back to her, but... but... Ah! Hey Jill, have you tried thinking about clothes for four? Clothes for... Heh. <laughs> Listen, I know how you must feel. But you can't let all of that cloud your senses. Next time you feel overwhelmed by these thoughts, try distracting yourself. Like with, say, thinking of what kind of clothes you can put on four. Yeah... You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Well, keep in mind, you're included in this circle too, so any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time. A red-headed glasses-wearing gun knight called Iris. Oh, the one who got the jar off your head. Or the helmet. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. Oh, your friends are all like... Bartenders or bar owners too? I'm not sure if I should finish this last one. I just don't want to pass out. But I'm a bartender. I should be... I should have pretty high alcohol tolerance, right? She's managing a bar too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called... Nirvana. Oh! And if you thought this city was dangerous... Nirvana is the sequel to Valhalla, right? It's not out yet, but that's the name. Oh, okay, so we're going to a different bar for the sequel. And if you thought the city was dangerous... You should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. Actual piracy. And means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nerve and B in the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave. It seems like boss's circle of friends might all be pretty well off. Owning a bar? I don't think I could dream of that in a million years. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends... I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there was also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San Francisco Police Force. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. Is that... That's from Read Only Memories, right? I kind of vaguely remember this name. And Neo San Francisco, too. Wait, you were in the what? Oh, I kind of ignored it because I thought she talked about it before, but I forgot about it. But she used to be in the police? And I think somebody mentioned that Dana was in Read Only Memories as well, but I don't really remember what she did there. I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Anyways. Aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi... Hmm... I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Back home and at college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was a pleasure, rather than the people involved. 
this feeling that Jill has might be why she feels so empty. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. And, oh, Dorothy. I mean, sure, there was always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And all these people are people you meet at the bar too, so besides bar stuff, do you have friends from elsewhere? I do feel like after you graduate school, it becomes exponentially harder to make friends, unless if you, like, make an effort to really go outside your normal friend circle. When you're at school, you already see people every day and stuff, but then once you're out of that environment, that becomes something that you realize in hindsight is really hard to come by. And, you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know? Boss. Hey, boss. Hmm? How did you lose your V-card? Oh, you're so drunk, Jill. V... huh? You know, your V-card. Your first time, you're deflowering. Oh, that. Well... I'm legally bound to not disclose that information. Is that because you're 17? Does that mean you lost it? Can't disclose that information. Come on, just give me a hint, or... Jill, bad things will happen for everyone if that info is revealed in any way. Alright, alright, sheesh. I can only say this. The whole thing is related to my mechanical arm. What?! Great. Now you're just teasing me. Any reason you want to know that? Well, I don't want to know about your V-card specifically, but I want to know about your arm. Because people keep telling me about it. Telling me about how you're the Red Comet and whatever. Well, everyone's first time is always a mess. But I've always to know if it was as messy a time as mine. What happened? Well, I got all lovey-dovey with my first boyfriend. And when we both got naked, I... <laughs> When I saw his... <laughs> when I saw his dick, I just started... <laughs> <clears throat> I started laughing. What? Got nervous? Nervous? No, I just find dicks funny. You... Uh... They're funny. They're... <laughs> <laughs> they have a sack attached to them, man. <laughs> and they grow, and They're just... <laughs> They're just stupid meat rods! I think it's time to finish his drink. <laughs> so, how did your boyfriend react? He went flaccid from the laughter and... <laughs> it just shrunk and went limp. I had to work it out to... for a bit so I could control my laughter. But... It's so hard! They're just so stupid! <laughs> <sighs> Stupid meat rods. Jill? Uh, huh. Well, let's see how to move her back inside before she catches the cold. Wow, I don't think Jill would normally talk about any of this. She's really drunk. But sometimes maybe she needs to just talk it out, you know? Stop bottling things up. <laughs>